Okay, so um, this afternoon, my role is to talk about monasticism according to the role of St. Augustine, which is only to complement what, what Father Emil has already discussed lengthily in his two talks this afternoon. So my presentation would be divided into four. The first would be the literary genre or the literary type of the rule of our father, St. Augustine. Number two would be the structure and content. Number three would be Augustine's concept of monasticism. Here we will try to see the spirituality and theology of Augustinian monasticism. And of course, the spirit of observance. I promise that I will be very, very brief so that you won't have any indigestion of the too many informations that you have gotten already. So let us go to the literary genre. In rule 1-1 of our Father St. Augustine, it is said, ex sunt que ut observetis precipimus in monasterio constituti. No? These are the precepts that we order, that you observe, you, know, you who live in the monastery. So this gives us an idea that the literary type of the rule is a precept, you know, which is a commandment or a rule of conduct in the monastery precisely. These precepts are addressed to the monks or to those who live in the monastery. Now, having given these precepts to the monks and declared that spiritual communion is the principal end of common life, St. Augustine intends to show the useful precepts to achieve such end. Therefore, it is necessary for us to understand the reason behind the things we do. What is the end game of the precepts being commanded to us in the rule? Of course, the rule as, as a precept no, is devoid of lengthy um, theological treatises or spiritual explanation of the precepts themselves. So thus it excludes the idea that it is just a simple monastic rule that governs the daily life of the monastery, nor a simple general institution of Christian life. These precepts do not look into forming perfect Christians, but Christians capable of living in monastery in unity. Therefore, the focus of the rule is not the end, but the progression in perfection. And that is the living in the monastery with one mind and heart. Now let us go now to the structure and content of the rule. There you see what I have mentioned earlier. Now the words exunque ut observetis precipimus in monasterio constituti. This phrase is even considered the title of the level loose. No? Or sometimes they are called the precepts for the monks or the rule is called even the preceptum. Now, from this, we will be presenting three parts, which would give us gen general um, perspective of, of the rule. So the first one would be rule one, numbers one to eight, which indicates the principal purpose of monastic life. And that is the experience of the spiritual and material communion proper of the primitive church as described in Acts 4, 32 to 35, okay? Spiritual and material communion proper of the primitive church. Therefore, here we see you know, that the spirituality of Augustinian monasticism is practically ecclesia, okay? The spirituality of what is to be church. The second part, you know, which would be from chapters 2 to 7 of the rule, contains precepts showing the means to grow in communion, in charity, and what are these elements? Common prayer, ascetical practices, modesty, and safeguarding chastity, 
common work in household chores, forgiveness of offenses, authority, and obedience. And the last part, you know, which would be chapter 8 you know, of the rule, indicates the spirit of love and freedom which ought to encourage the observance of all the precepts. So the, the observance of the precept must be realized within the parameters of love and freedom. Okay, precisely what Father Emil has mentioned in his first talk, you know, that the emphasis of the rule is charity. It's love. You know, and not asceticism itself. And of course, you know, Augustine would even consider that if there is any asceticism that we are to live, it is the asceticism of charity. Now, what is Augustine's monastic concept? This is to contrast you know, the preceptum or the rule of St. Augustine with the other religious rules. For Pacomius and Basil, cenobitism is fundamentally an ascetical experience or an ascetic experience. And they consider the cenobium as the most proper place to achieve Christian perfection. Okay, now the regular magistri and the rule of St. Benedict considered the monastery as the school of Christian service. Now, what does the preceptum tell us? Okay, what does the preceptum tell us? No, it puts forward monastic life, not in view of the Christian perfection of the monks, but in view of an authentic experience of the church. Therefore, if, we, if that is the goal you know, of, of Augustinian monasticism, of living community life, that is the experience, to experience what is to be church, then we say the community, the communion that we foster is a reflection of the church. So much so that what characterizes the church must be the same thing that would characterize our religious community, whether it is the community of friars, the community of nuns, the community of religious sisters, you know, whether we are forming the secular fraternity or the, the, the real community, or the community we say, you know, that we build in our specific apostolates in schools, in, in parishes, in the missions. That is why it is most important for us to understand this, because otherwise we can form many forms of communities, many kinds of associations or organizations, but are we trying to, to really um, build the church according to St. Augustine? So as I've said, for us to understand truly, you know, truly Augustinian communion, Augustinian monasticism or community life for that matter, we have to understand what is church for St. Augustine. And simply, I would be presenting to you three moments of the church, which is very, very important and quite interesting. The first moment is the incarnation. And according to St. Augustine, the incarnation is the moment where, when the church is conceived. And what is incarnation, if not the simple union of the divine? In the human, okay. When when the divine assumes humanity, everything of humanity except sin, that is the beginning of church. And therefore, if we are to translate that you know, to our own ecclesial experience, whether in religious life, you no, know, or in the communities we are trying to build, you no, know, based on our charism as Augustinian recollects, you no. Know, the beginning of community life must also be within that dynamics. You know, the union of the divine and the human. And where does this thing happen? In our contemplation, in our meditation, in the, in the process of interiority where we, we get in touch with God, in the study of the word, in the reception of the, of the sacraments, anything that makes us in touch with God and God with us is the beginning of com community life, 
of or the beginning of what we call Augustinian monasticism. Without this, my dear friends, it is impossible to build Augustinian community. Therefore, all of us probably pray, all of us have our own structure in order to foster this thing, but it must be clear in our minds, my dear people of God, that such prayer practices, meditation, study of the word of God, such process of interiority to get in touch with our interior master is in view of building church. Whether globally or from the macro perspective or in our own local communities. The second moment is what we call the birth of the church and it happens in the cross. No, it is very clear in Augustine's um, commentary on the Gospel of John. He says, Adam sleeps, that Eve may be formed. Christ dies, that church may be formed. So the death of Christ on the cross brought about the birth of the church. The conception starts during incarnation, but its birth happened when Christ died on the cross. And therefore, in our, own, in, our own, in our own experience, the cross experience is a necessary element to give birth to what is to be church, what is to be Augustinian community. And lastly, which is the manifestation of the church and it happened during the Pentecost. For Augustine, no? The Pentecost is the external manifestation of the church. Okay, so let us try to deepen that a bit. The main purpose for you having come together is to live harmoniously in your house, intent upon God in oneness of mind and heart. And this we read in the rule of our father, St. Augustine 1, 2. So here we see three scriptural um, what you call the allusions. Number one is John 11 that says, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God to bring them together and make them one. So it simply talks about God's plan to gather into unity for the children of God that were dispersed. And therefore, if we are trying to build communion, union, community, it's not because it is just our personal inclination or probably it's just my personal dream, but it is God's design. It is God's plan. It is what God wants us to do. Therefore, when we have to bear the difficulties of community building, we have to bear in mind that these things are necessary for us to fulfill what God wants to realize the design or the plan of God. So, okay, let it be clear no, that it is God's plan for us to be brought in unity. Number two would be Psalm 67, 7a. But I would like to, um, <clears throat> to make this um, clear that this text comes, was taken from the Swaptogen, no, which is actually the the Greek text of the Old Testament. And if you try to look this psalm in our Bible today, you might not find it as easy as, as it is put there. Okay, so Psalm 67a, and let us just focus on the first line, God who makes men of one manner to dwell in a house. Which simply tells us that though God is the planner, at the same time, he is the one who realizes, you know, who brings about that unity. Therefore, the God element in communion building in Augustinian monasticism is indispensable. It is not we who are the prime movers of communion building or of Augustinian monasticism, but it is God. It is God who plans. It is God who executes. Okay. Then number three would be Acts 4.32. And it says there, now the company of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had everything in common. In short, if the, 
that is God's plan. God is the primordial mover for that um, spiritual communion. What is our role then? Our role enters here. It can be seen here. Now that the company of those who believe are one heart, Um, they put everything in common. Okay. So let us go now to the spirit of observance. So the preceptum or the rule of St. Augustine is distinguished by its loving spirit of observance. And then we say there, Lord, this would be in the last chapter of the rule. Lord, the Lord grant that you may observe all these precepts in a spirit of charity as lovers of spiritual beauty giving forth the good order of Christ in the holiness of your lives, not as slaves li living under the law, but as men living in freedom under grace. So here we see four pillars of monasticism. And these things are already um, reflected in, even in our constitutions or at least the constitutions of the order of Augustinian records. So the first part there that you may observe all these precepts in a spirit of charity as lovers of spiritual beauty, and that is our contemplative dimension. The lovers of spiritual beauty, and that beauty with capital letter B is God himself. Okay, that communion with God, our prayer life, our sacramental life would fall under that category. The next would be giving forth the good order of Christ you know, in the holiness of, of your lives. And this would be community life and consequently apostolic life. If you try to see, you know, order is something that we smell, right? That is why we ask ourselves, what kind of, of smell do we exude to others? In short, how do others experience us? And this would start in community first. And then the overflowing experience of that order of Christ from the community would now be translated into apostolate, into how we reach out to people, probably who do not strictly belong to our own group or to our own community. And lastly, you no. Know, not as slaves under the law, but as men living in freedom under grace. So in short here, we see the interplay of freedom and grace. No? So the concept expressed here, typical of the Augustinian spirituality, is in contrast clearly with the spirit that animated other forms of monasticism. So focusing on the personal perfection of the monks, the other monastic rules insisted on the ascetical practices, on the direction of the abbot, and on obedience, and therefore on the effort of the human will. Okay, so the focus you know, would be on the strengthening of the human will. Okay, the human will, and these were considered to be the hinges of monastic life at that time. So. But for Augustine, it's quite different. Precisely, you know, this reality explained the strong anti-Augustinian reaction on the part of some monasteries of that time. Augustine's doctrine on grace for Pelagius and the monks of Adrumentum in Marseille was too dangerous because for them, for them, because it put in crisis the very foundations or the hinges of monastic life at that time. So redirect, redirecting the whole observance to charity and to God's grace for the monks, you know, for the other monks, Augustine, you know, for them, Augustine is diminishing and even utterly denying the role of the human person. Okay. But then let us try to see. For Augustine, the perfection of man depends solely on his union with God. The monk, if he wants to be faithful to his holy purpose, must live at the presence of God. And that is the contemplation which I have just mentioned. You know, if he wants to be faithful to his holy purpose, 
must live at the presence of God in order to converse with him and continuously contemplate his beauty. And from this dialogical encounter comes love for God and for Christ, which allows a faithful observance of the precepts, expressions of interior freedom, and not of servile fear, and therefore an authentic witnessing of Christ. And therefore, you see, Augustine underscores you know, the primacy of the role of grace, of experiencing God, and everything would just follow. Because such experience, you know, such contemplative experience of God would empower us to live out the precepts in order to build Augustinian community. So here I end my reaction. Thank you and good afternoon.